Hi, this is David Spears. Recently, HP announced and started shipping a Python compiler in select releases of its new Commodore 7 Switch software. So if you're like me and you've done some Python programming, you, you can start to imagine having a compiler right on the Switch really does open up the door to do a lot more automation on the Switch and on the network. And this has been an area that HP really has been excelling at in terms of how do you automate, how do you simplify things on the networking side. So today I thought I'd put together a little video that shows you what the Python compiler looks like uh, on the HP switches and also how you execute a couple of simple programs I've written both locally and remotely. Alright, so let's take a look at the switch. So what I've got here is two Telnet sessions. One of them is open to an HP 5900 switch that's the 48 port 10 gig version and it's got four 40 gig ports on it as well. I've also got a Telnet session open to a Ubuntu machine running uh, an SDN controller and what I'll do a little bit later is show you how we can execute some commands remotely uh, on, the, on the switch. Well, let's take a look at the switch itself and we see we're running a version of Commerce 7 release 2307 that has the Python compiler integrated into it and just like you would on a workstation just type in Python will get you into the interactive compiler and we can see that we're running version 2.7 uh, which is a pretty new version I know there's version 3 out there but 2.7 is, is really more compatible with, with a lot more third party um, soft pieces of software right now so I for one prefer the 2.7 2.7 release and so you know this is a full implementation of the, the Python compiler you can import modules um, you know obviously you can oops, assign variables and I apologize I had to do it so to actually execute a a script that's local to the switch, just like you would on a workstation, Python, and then the script name. And performing the question mark afterwards gives us a list of the Python scripts that are locally uh, on the switch, and so we can actually do a directory of the flash drive. And see, we've got the operating system, and you can see that we've got some uh, Python scripts on here. Let's just further refine that down a little bit and we can see here the scripts that I was talking about before, right? So let me let me just show you uh, one of the scripts. This should look pretty familiar, anyone who's doing some Python programming, um, but this is a pretty storm, normal um, Python script, so we're importing a couple of variables uh, into the script itself, and what you may notice right here is one of the modules that we're importing is called Comware. And this is a built-in module that's that's provided with this particular compiler uh, written by HP. And there's a couple of classes in here that really make the you know, the implementation of Python on, on the switches um, work. And one of them is the CLI uh, class. And what the CLI class does is it gives you the ability to actually execute commands locally on the switch. So very easy with this particular module to go through and execute a command and so in this particular case we're executing a save command to save the configuration after the end at the end of the script another uh, class that is very handy is the get underscore output so this particular class allows you to take the output from a command pull it back into the script so you can actually uh, interrogate the output and potentially form you know, perform actions based on that output so this particular script that, that I've got is designed to find the interface that an IP address is connected to and then perform whatever command uh, you want to do on, on that particular interface. So if we take a look, um, let's see, let's, uh, oops, let's pick on the loopback interface. If we take a look at the loopback interface, we see you've got an IP address of 172.25.25.25, and that is all that's on that particular interface. So if we execute this particular command, and we say find this address, and oh 
by the way, he is doing something I'm not happy about, so let's just shut down that interface. So what, what we'll do is we'll go through and uh, execute this command. We'll see you know what it's what it's doing interactively. So looking for that IP address based on, on what it gets as a result. Um, this is I'm echoing back the command that we're going to execute. You know the commands that we're going to execute. We go through, we log in, we shut down the interface, um, and then at the end, if you remember, we actually go through and save out the configuration. So if we take a look again at the interface, we now see that interface is shut down. Um, so let's say we want to do something else. Let's say uh, this particular IP address, I know it belongs to Dave, um, and, but what I don't know is I have no idea where it is. But you know what? I should, I should go through and document where that is. So what this is going to do is go out, um, find this IP address, assign a description to that particular interface. You know, we see we've gone through these are the commands we're going to execute and we're done executing to save out the config. And if we take a look at the interface again, we will see we've actually now added a description to that interface, right? So I've got another uh, another script that I've written that will actually take the output from a command and forward it on to um, an FTP server. So you know, that, that particular script is called display info. And let's see, here's my FTP server. Um, and then let's see if we can define a file name that we want to actually Oops. Just do. and let's pick a command that we want to run um, let's do a let's just do a display current and what I've got here in the background is I actually have, here's the FTP server that we specified over there. So um, what we'll see is we should, oh, there, over here, here we go. And, and here we can see that particular file. Um, something else that I've done is, is the uh, HP switch comes with a job scheduler. So I've also created a couple of jobs, or actually one job, um, and what I'm doing is executing a script via that job. So if you've got something, some action that you want to perform repeatedly, um, in this particular case I'm just doing a, a backup, um, and actually one of my, here we've, this is the old version of that, so why don't we just set that here we should see because um, I have this set up to run whoops, every two minutes. So we should actually um, see here in a little bit that actually running. So, so very handy to be able to actually go through and um, you know, perform a, a job on a regular cadence looking for something or you know doing a security check it's sending out a result or um, you know performing some some general maintenance as well so that's that's some of the power and, and really I mean whatever you you can think of doing on, on a switch with a um, you know with the Python now you can actually start to automate that but sometimes um, that's great running things locally but it could also be very nice to to go ahead and, and run some things um, you know from a central location so what I did is I put together just a little script to, to be able to execute a Python command um, centrally so I can pick a switch and you could you could easily you know have this run through a series of switches if you wanted if you want to do some automation um, but for this one I'm, I'm doing this more ad hoc and unless
let's let's just execute a command remotely. So let's go and, and let's say um, we are going to and correct or change um, what we did. We shut down this interface before, right? So let's say we've gone through and we've done some corrective measure and we want to, to go through and um, bring that interface back online. So what we can do is we can actually go through from a central location through a very simple script and, and execute a, a command um, remotely as well. All right. So if we take a look, here we've gone back through and now that interface is back up and running. Okay. And we also see, or I can see now that we've also got our, our backup job at some point um, hit the two minute mark and we ran and, and we created a, another backup of the, of the environment. That is what I wanted to show you um, with the, the Python capabilities. And you know really the, the opportunities are endless here. So if you've got a, a need to, to script something, don't, don't forget about the ability to use Python. Thanks.